so often wild animals are the casualties of our human existence. Killed for profit. Their habitats under threat, made to live in cramped spaces, poorly fed. They're destined to live out their lives in misery unless someone takes action. Wild Animal Rescue follows the people from the international animal welfare charity Four Paws as they go on daring and sometimes dangerous rescue missions to give animals a better life. In this episode, a drama-packed mission flying six tigers from the Netherlands to South Africa. First, a medical emergency. Followed by hijinks on the tarmac. And then, the challenges of treating lions with medical problems. Lift the lion up. How? Frisia is a province in the northwest of the Netherlands. Agriculture and farming are the main industries here. Horses and livestock dot the landscape. It's certainly not where you'd expect to come across tigers, lions and panthers. This fairly ordinary looking rural property is the Felida Big Cat Center, housing 20 large predatory cats that have been rescued from locations all over Europe. This is uh, Cromwell and he came from Dartmoor Wildlife Center in the UK. He ended up in the center here after the Dartmoor Wildlife Center turned out to have unsafe enclosures. That was in 2002. The owner of the center was charged with illegally breeding Siberian tigers and keeping them in poor conditions. Cromwell settled in nicely and mated with another tiger here called Juno. They had two litters and out of the first litter only uh, Rasputin survived and he is uh, luckily a very healthy big tiger. And the second litter is two males and one female. They're called uh, Mirza, Rafik and Sita. Cromwell and Juno and their four cubs have continued to live at the center, even through a period when the center was struggling to survive. Originally called Pantera, it was founded in the early 90s as a shelter for big cats born in captivity. Many were retired circus cats that would otherwise have been put down. But a few years ago, Pantera came under financial pressure and the enclosures began to fall into disrepair. I met you know, in Cromwell 10 years ago and um, I, could, um, I couldn't get them out of my mind. The, the way that they were kept, the darkness, the coldness, the, the smell, everything was, was just terrible. And I just couldn't get them out of my mind. In 2013, Four Paws took over the center and carried out maintenance and improvements to bring it up to scratch. An important part of daily life for the animals of Felida is what's known as enrichment, activities which help to keep the animals physically and mentally stimulated. If you look to especially predators in uh, captivity, you can see that uh, their environment is not stimulus for them, so they don't see any new things. And through enrichment, they can get their feeling that they're being in the wild, they have the new smells, they can hunt. Physical props which provide enrichment can be cardboard boxes, balls, watermelons, or for the more sophisticated tiger, designer label perfume. This is just a normal perfume, but uh, the smell is pretty intense. And when the animals look to, uh, around in their enclosure, it's like they walking around in their own territory. And if they smell a different smell in the territory, they want to mark the smell. So that's why they get really interested in different smells in the enclosures. It's called flaming in Dutch. They uh, put up their lips and try to scent in the air, so they have a special organ here, and they can smell better with that organ. Despite all the enrichment activities and improvements made to the enclosures, the long-term plan is to move most of the big cats to places where they have more space and will be more stimulated. Cromwell, Juno, and their four offspring are the next to be moved, but it's going to be a massive journey all the way to Four Paws' flagship wildlife sanctuary, Lion's Rock, in South Africa. In South Africa, they get the space they need, they get all the facilities they need, they've got the trees they can climb in, they've got the nice weather, they've got the pools where they can swim, because tigers love to swim. And unfortunately, we can't give it uh, to them here in the Netherlands. 
the veterinary team have arrived. Experts in wildlife medicine, they have the important task of tranquilizing the animals in order to move them into their travel crates. Normally, they'd do a pre-anesthetic check on any animal that's going to be sedated. But with tigers being dangerous animals, that's not possible. There's an element of risk with this procedure. Their mobile clinic needs to be ready for any emergencies. The flight to Johannesburg is scheduled for 11 p.m. It's a two-hour drive to the airport where there'll be inspections and documentation, which could take quite a while to clear. They can't afford any delays. We do two animals at the same time because we have the luxury that we have enough veterinarians here around, so to keep the procedure as, as short as possible. We are working with dangerous animals, of course, and with dangerous drugs, so safety first. Safety for the animals and safety for all the people. Frank is responsible for the safety of the team, and he's not entirely comfortable. To be honest, the cages uh, doesn't look really promising. Huh? No. Not, uh... no. The enclosures are not really 100% safe, and we have to cross the public uh, areas here. So a lot of people around. It's not the best situation working with dangerous animals. So that's the reason why we take uh, especially more than 100 precautions. Frank and his team estimate the weight of each animal and carefully calculate the dosages required to sedate them. They are the biggest ones, so calculate 170, 160, she's 110. Anesthetizing large carnivores is a risky business with plenty of opportunity for things to go wrong. It's quite important to have the right dose for the anesthesia, of course, so now we're going to prepare each individual dart for every animal. The vets use a gas-propelled gun to dart the tigers. The first to be tranquilized is Rafiq. The dart must hit a large muscle for the needle to lodge and correctly release the drugs. Next is brother Mirza. The anesthesia will only last around half an hour, giving the staff a short window of time when it's safe to handle the animals. It takes around 10 minutes for the drugs to take effect. The team follows strict safety procedures, only entering the enclosure once the vets have given the okay. You're too big? <laughs> I'm a big guy, huh? Take it out this one. The first priority is to start monitoring the tigers to make sure they're responding okay to the drugs. But the small size of these holding cages is making the job very awkward. He's lying also just in front of the door. Nice. Rafik is stable, but Mirza's responses are causing concern. She's really relaxed, huh? Yeah, she's. Breathing is not. It's not as good. So we. Uh, it's not deep and regular. So we will get the oxygen. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I need to go to the end. Milliliter? Five milliliter. Adrenaline? Yeah. Had a reaction? No. Mirza has gone into cardiac arrest and needs a drug to get his heart beating again. Next, what are they trying to do to this lion? Come, 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 come. And Mirza's life is hanging in the balance. Come, we must an antidote give him. Our four paws team is moving six adult tigers from the Netherlands to South Africa. But Mirza, one of the first tigers to be sedated, has gone into cardiac arrest. The situation is critical. This one? Yeah. If you? Between 20 and 80, it's going up and down. Okay. It's back. Yeah. So we load him first. Yeah. Quick. Ich höre nichts gerade. Hang on, hang on. Komm, wir müssen ihm ein Antidot geben. Lass uns ihn raustragen. Okay. Yeah. Antidot fertig machen, ja. Okay, you ready? Mirza is still very unstable. 
The team desperately need to get him into the travel crate so they can administer the recovery serum. Someone hold the head, sir. Let's go. One, two, three. One, two, three. OK, one, two, three. OK. So hard. He atmet 16 per minute. Atmet good. The recovery serum will now bring Mirza out of his sedation. Mirza's brother Rafiq appears to be stable, but that incident shows why Frank and his team have to be prepared for any emergency. The heartbeat was very, very low, and he was not breathing, so that's the reason why we supplied oxygen and some emergency drugs. Resuscitating Mirza cost the team valuable time and they need to push on if they want to have any hope of reaching the airport in time. The tigers in the crates are carefully monitored until it's safe to wake them. Think about the deal. They're checking the heartbeat and seeing if they can wake him up, and then he gets the antidote against the anesthetics. And then we close the door a bit, and uh, as soon as all the wires are out, we close it, and then we wait for him to wake up. Once each animal is awake, its crate can be loaded onto the transporter. Rafiq is being loaded in front of Mirza, who is now fully awake and angry, causing her brother to stress as well. Well, he's uh, trying to get out, I think. I don't know. With a journey of over 24 hours ahead, Mirza's stress levels are dangerously high. Also of concern, the mother tiger, Juno, isn't responding well. The team need to get her reacting before the transport can get underway. Yeah, it's good. She's lifting her head. You're not allowed to transport immobilized animals, so we just needed to be sure that she's really not immobilized anymore. She's just, she has a hangover. If you tease her, um, she lifts the head and she's like, uh, what are you doing? But if you let it go, she just goes down and sleeps. So it's fine, she's sleepy, but she's awake. All of the animals are finally loaded. Now they can start the two-hour road trip to Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. Some of the staff at Valida have been caring for these tigers for many years, so this is a bittersweet moment. Yeah, it's very mixed emotions. Happy for them, we're gonna miss them terribly, but um, we know where they're going to, and we're absolutely sure they're gonna be delighted. This is the tiger's future home, Lion's Rock, in the Free State, South Africa. Spread over 1,200 hectares, it's home to a variety of big cat, roaming game, and other African wildlife. It started with one group of rescued lions. A former safari park in Austria got bankrupt. There are 14 lions without having any hope for the future and four posts stepped in. After having no luck in finding an existing sanctuary to house the lions, four paws came across a farm in South Africa and decided to establish their own sanctuary. That was in 2007. Today, Lion's Rock is home to more than 120 big cats. With the animals here, they should be in the wild. They shouldn't be in a sanctuary. What we're doing here is just to clean up the last things where the humans did wrong steps to deal with these animals. Being rescued animals, many of the cats at Lion's Rock need regular medical care. Hello, my boy. Hey, how's it? Head of animal welfare, Hildegard Perker has called in local specialist vet Dr. Peter Caldwell to look at nine-year-old Genghis. He appears to be limping on his back legs. Calcaneus Achilles tendon, eh? Laxicity of the Achilles tendons. Dr. Caldwell's first guess is that damage to the heel bones has caused injury to the Achilles tendons. I suspect his, both calcaneuses were broken at some stage. Broken? And, yeah, and then, they, then the Achilles tendon pulled its skew. Yeah. You see the knee? Then the, the joint below the knee there. It goes right down. The angulation is down. I think it's causing inflammation and pain. Genghis has been lured into the night room attached to the enclosure. That way it's much easier to dart him.
Once he's sedated, he's taken over to the Lions Rock Clinic, where Dr. Caldwell and his team will perform x-rays. Eye drops are given to prevent his eyes drying out. I just want to take some x-ray of his hips and his hind legs, because the problem seems to be in the hind legs. Ah, there's crepitus there. At nine years old, Genghis is middle-aged for a lion. In the wild, males seldom live longer than 10 to 14 years. However, in captivity, they can live more than 20 years. All right, what was that left? Uh, left. Okay. Prep for the next one. Your line needs to be turned. To get the next x-ray, the team must put Genghis into a seated position with his hind legs stretched out in front. Not a very flattering look for the king of beasts. All right. Wonderful, Angie. Now you guys must hold it, eh? Hold it straight. I was, uh, you do the machine then if you can't hold it straight. Trying to handle over 200 kilograms of deadweight lion is often a struggle. Hold the line on top there, guys. Hold the line. You're letting it collapse. Come, guys. Come here. That's seven people trying to maneuver Genghis into position, and they're not having a lot of success. Oh. Oh. Come, 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 come. Pull the line back. Yeah, it's struggling. Yeah. Oh. The x-rays don't reveal any major problems with the bones in his legs. This is the calcaneus I was talking about. That's, that's totally normal. Achilles tendon is totally normal. So the bones are fine, eh? So it's the spine? Yeah, it's the spine. I think these ligaments are nothing to worry about. I think it's the spine. OK, take a drip off and let's go. Nothing we can't fix, though. The solution is to put him on a drug program for up to a year. Hildegard can administer his medicine by way of dart gun herself without having to call the vet out. But first, she's going to need a bit of practice. Next, Hildegard discovers firing a hypodermic dart isn't as easy as it looks. Put your dart in and put your doppies in. <laughs> you have to show me. <laughs> okay. And there's a serious situation for one of the tigers left behind at the Felida Big Cat Center. Oh, no, it moves a little bit. Maybe. Oh. OK. <laughs> The six tigers may be on the road to South Africa, but the vet's work hasn't finished at the Valida Big Cat Center in the Netherlands. They're giving medical checkups to some of the older residents at the center, like Sandra, who's been suffering from health problems. Well, Sandra has a bump on her back, um, and we were not sure how uh, it happened, but we think that she probably slipped and got a hernia. Um, and she also had a lot of trouble with her bladder. Sandra's keepers have been treating her with antibiotics, but as soon as the medication stops, her symptoms return, and they're getting worse. At 15 years old, Sandra is nearing the end of her lifespan. Animals that are sick or old often cannot be rehoused due to the dangers involved in anesthesia and transport. Sadly, that means Sandra is unlikely to ever leave the center. However, the team here are still intent on giving her a good quality of life for the remainder of her years. We took a blood sample, and now we have her on the infusion line. And uh, now we're going to start with the ultrasound examination yeah, and see what we find. The ultrasound quickly reveals a serious problem with Sandra's bladder. It looks like, you can I check it? So it looks yeah. like it's more. Nice. It's more like a mass, yeah? Yeah. The bladder looks pretty filled with uh, something, so before... Of course, we cannot see the quality of the content, mm -hmm. but we can just say that it's filled not only with urine, but filled with um, either pus or mucoid, but since um, pus could see some bacterial infection, mm -hmm. the chances that it's pus is mm -hmm. quite high. Oh, now it moves a little bit. You see that? Maybe we... Oh! OK. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... We're going to wait what uh, Frank says about the ultrasound, and then we probably 
put a catheter in and flush it. Analysis of Sandra's blood provides further evidence of serious issues with her vital organs. She has a acetomia, which means that um, special metabolites that have to be excreted over the bladder, the kidneys and the bladder, that they didn't um, get filtered out of the blood, so they are now higher. Further examination reveals damage to the kidneys as well. It's not looking good. You really see a very unregular surface. And also compared to the aorta, the kidneys are already shrunk. The kidneys are so destroyed that it's uh, not reversible anymore. Mm -hmm. With the ultrasound, you see very first signs very early mm -hmm. before you see changes in the blood. But in her, the changes in the blood already indicating so it's it's only get bruise. and it means she is in pain or whatever yeah, it's just, it's just big pain. we diagnosed um, a very very severe kidney problem so it started already that the, the entire body get intoxicated and um, it is very obvious that this is not reversible and it's a lot of pain it's very painful and this we made a clear decision best for the animals to euthanize. So we made a decision for her. It's devastating for the team. They've just given new life to six tigers, and now they had to lose one. Okay, so look through this. Keep both your eyes open. Go point through the window there. Back at Lion's Rock, Hildegard is learning how to use a dart rifle so she can administer monthly medication to Genghis. This put your dart in and put your doppies in. <laughs> you have to show me. <laughs> okay. Come stand this side. The gun needs to be loaded with a cartridge which provides the propulsion for the dart. There are three different strengths of cartridge depending on how far you want to shoot. Brown is the weakest, green is the middle one, and yellow is the strongest. Choose one that you would think you want, would want to use. In which case, for now? Or yeah, so your line's escaped, yeah, and it's running there, but just behind the trees, behind that uh, fortune. From, from where? From here, yeah, the stairs, you can't get from closer. Here? Yeah, from here, you've got to shoot that line. <laughs> you uh, said this is the strongest, the yellow yes. one, so I would use this. OK, put it in. Shooting guns isn't what Hildegard signed up for when she decided to go into animal conservation. I'm a pacifist. I'm, I'm a pacifist. <laughs> now let's go and dart the lion. That's where I aimed. Perfect. Wow, that was a good shot. Was that a yellow one? That was yellow, yes. Okay, let's put a green one in. Right, and in. Now shoot a green charge and let's see what this gun does on green charge. Every gun is different. Hildegard shot with the highest strength cartridge first. Green is the middle right. strength. I feel that that first dart hit way too hard. You probably broke a bone or something. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah, but it was very accurate. So one has to decide. Can I give a brown charge? OK, close. It doesn't even go there. There's no way. Go and have a look at those darts and see how deep they went. Wow. <laughs> it hits hard, eh? Sorry. <laughs> you see, that went all the way in there. That would have broken a lion's bump. And that is, and that is a, a that wood. One, That's not a, a lion's bump. That one hit a little less hard. Yellow, I'm scared of. I never use yellow. You see, that one comes out quickly, eh? Next, the tigers arrive in South Africa, but not everyone's happy. Guys, Rafik is really stressed. Can we just not stir me more? And a lion that has the specialist amazed. Yeah, I've never actually seen a lion that looks like this before. Wildlife veterinarian Dr. Peter Caldwell is visiting Lion's Rock in South Africa's Free State. Hello, Gypsy, and she's drinking water, which we don't really want her to do. Yeah, it's, but it's okay. It's okay. It's too late. We'll deal with it. 
Hildegard has called him in to inspect several lions with special health problems, like Gypsy, a 14-year-old lion with dwarfism. Yeah, I've never actually seen a lion that looks like this before when I saw her was astounded. She was born in Romania in 2001 together with a male. I'm not sure exactly how she became so handicapped, but must have happened while she was growing up that they didn't nourish her properly and not enough sun, maybe inbreeding, a lot of factors can have, can have been, but her brother was looking the same. Gypsy and her brother spent over 10 years in a small concrete enclosure in Romania. Eventually, they were rescued by Pantera, the name the Felida Big Cat Center went by before Four Paws took it over. Unfortunately, her brother died in that period before Four Paws took over. And yeah, she is now here since July 2014. And in general, the, the climate here is much better for her joints because she has obviously arthritis. During her past year and a half at Lion's Rock, Gypsy has been in good health. However, in the past month, Hildegard has noticed that she often appears to be in pain. When the animal keepers were coming to feed her every evening in here, she would run, yeah. really like run, hop, 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 funny way, but she runs. And this, uh, a month ago, you could see she was like walking slow. And that is the time when I thought something got worse. Gypsy is obviously one of those cases that is not repairable, but there is a possibility of making her life a lot more comfortable. We're unsure of exactly what caused it. Is it the genetic component causing dwarfism, or is it medication that was used that caused premature closure of growth plates? But it's a syndrome of, of, of things. We call it a syndrome which is a multifactorial. Dr. Caldwell needs to sedate Gypsy before he can inspect her more closely. Sorry, Gypsy. The tigers have landed safely in South Africa and are quickly moved to the loading area for the final leg of the journey to Lion's Rock. Barbara and keeper Yuno traveled with the animals in the cargo plane. During the flight, we checked them once and they responded very well. They seemed calm and relaxed. I think now they're a bit stressed because of all the new people and the new smells and new sounds. So as soon as they're completely loaded, we can take off to Lion's Rock. A big team from Lion's Rock are here to load up the tigers. Rafiq, one of the young males, is not happy. Guys, Rafiq is really stressed. Can we just not disturb him more? Can we please all stay away from him? He's not very happy and you're stressing him out further. Barbara briefs veterinarian Katja Kupel on the status of the tigers. Well, we were a bit concerned, of course, because uh, Mirza reacted not so well to the sedation. And of course, you know, then be right before we wanted to transport her, she seemed to be not very stable. Okay. So we were very concerned. And I see them now being a bit aggressive, maybe, or agitated. But I think it's just I think it's just the situation. from being unloaded, the loud yes. noise, lots of people. The team are anxious to get going, but that can't happen until the paperwork and formalities are completed. What happens when they're landing, when any live shipment is coming, then we've got obviously the cargo agent, which is ensure that all the paperwork is here. Then we've got the state veterinarian who will check all the paperwork, will ensure that these animals have the correct permits, all the veterinary permits are in order. It's been over 24 hours since the tigers were sedated and Rafiq is getting increasingly agitated. Rafiq uh, ate all his flooring, his wooden flooring. He shredded it in the middle and he's just taking all his anger out on the wooden floor. It's supposed to take us, what, four hours about? We're gonna have to stop to check on the animals. We have to get fuel for the vehicle. The animals are really stressed. We really want to get them on the road. Finally, the convoy sets off. The four-hour road trip will take them just under 300 kilometers south through the African countryside to the Free State. Along the way, the team stop to refuel and check on the tigers. Rafiq appears to have calmed down, but now Mirza has Katja concerned. I've got a report from the vet that he didn't do well on the anaesthetic, so he's very, very flat. In the moment, I'm very worried. 
he's the only one not wanting to interact and what, look out, see the environment. He just wants to be left alone and sleep. And that's not a good sign. That just means something is not right. Back at Lion's Rock, Gypsy, the lion with dwarfism, is going on a much shorter journey. She's off to the clinic for a medical and dental checkup. We're working quite conservatively with Gypsy with respect to sedatives. We use the conservative dose. She went down really well, breathing really well. They noticed two of the canines that were fractured, the, the bottom canines, and they're doing root canals and repairing them. Fractured teeth aren't uncommon in lions. It happens as they get older and their teeth wear down. Many of the rescued lions had a poor diet when they were young, so their teeth are brittle. Two root canals will take a while, so Dr. Caldwell hooks Gypsy up to a respirator to make sure she gets enough oxygen. <laughs> the dentist drills holes at the base and tip of the canine teeth to clean out the inside of the tooth. The pulp is exposed and therefore infection is going to go in, potentially can go all the way into the jawbone. And that can cause abscessation and pain. However, Gypsy's age is not making it easy for the dentists to perform the root canal. As a tooth ages, pulp gets narrower and that brings its own complications because it's very difficult to find it. And in her case, we have not a very wide pulp, it just takes a lot of work. While the dentists work, blood samples are taken. These will reveal whether her dwarfism is affecting her organs. They finished removing the pulp and are now filling Gypsy's teeth with dental acrylic. It's taken almost three hours to get to this point. We're done, Peter. I'm just waiting for this to set. It's going to be a minute or so. All right, let's go. Dr. Caldwell wants Gypsy to have an X-ray. It'll be the first time she has been X-rayed. Hopefully, this will show whether Gypsy's dwarfism is impacting on other organs in her body. It could reveal if there are any other medical problems that are contributing to her pain. The tigers have finally arrived at Lion's Rock. This could be a traumatic introduction to Africa. All they've ever known are cages and enclosures in a European climate and landscape. Plus, several of the tigers have had a stressful journey. Tomorrow, they will be released and only then will the team get a clear idea of whether the rescue mission has been a success. At Lion's Rock, Gypsy the Lion has had a lengthy operation on her teeth, and the medical team are taking advantage of her still being sedated to give her x-rays to see how her dwarfism is affecting her. We took a whole series of x-rays of a whole skeleton just to get an idea of what we're dealing with. Yeah, those joints are all abnormal. It's very abnormal. The lower joints of the four legs were not great. There was a massive amount of osteoarthritis and uh, degenerative joint disease causing not being able to walk properly. It would occasionally cause pain. Also, it would deter her from obviously being very active. Together with her being inactive, you'd get a whole lot of other things, reduced intestinal function, and her metabolism would slow down quite a bit as well. While the prognosis isn't great, it's no surprise to Dr. Caldwell, and it's certainly helped in working out the best course of action. We are able to palliatively treat the condition and symptomatically keep the inflammation at bay and give her a good quality of life, which I think we have achieved, and I think it's a positive outcome in that Irrespective of what she looks like and how she walks, we're still able to give her a good quality of life. The tigers will be released first thing tomorrow, but before that can happen, Johanna, Barbara and Yuno from the Four Paws team want to check out the enclosures. So, you know, the trees and the, the, there's a pool down there and it's a, another house there. The tigers will first be released into smaller adaptation enclosures, while the permanent enclosures are being completed. This will help them to acclimatize, because moving animals from very small spaces directly to large areas can cause them stress. 
Look at this. Wow. It's so deep. It's so big. And it's not even filled. I mean... The enclosures have been specifically designed to give the tigers a stimulating environment. Half a hectare of space with plenty of enrichment features. The idea of this, you know, is, is just they need sometimes, uh, of course, shelter from rain, from hot weather, and also from their, for their privacy. To help the tigers transition to their new home, keeper Yuno Fanson will be a familiar face that remains with them until they move into their permanent enclosures. It is better than I expected, actually, if I, I looked at closures on the pictures, but now seeing it for myself, yeah, it's really amazing. I think they will do great here. The following morning, and the moment has finally arrived when the tigers can be released. But the Four Paws team aren't taking any risks. I'm going to make up a dart in case we have a problem that one of the animals goes through a fence or something. And because we won't have the time to make it when it happens, I'm gonna have it ready and load it in case there's an emergency. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the very exciting uh, day of the race of the four tigers that are still waiting patiently in the boxes. Safety is number one. And we have here on site two people with rifles. They are ready to protect us if it's necessary, but please don't, don't make it possible. Rafik and Mirza are already in the enclosures, having been released the previous evening. So basically yesterday we released the two males you can see on the left-hand side because of medical um, conditions. Rafik was very, very, very stressed. Um, so we decided he needed to go out and he needed to have some time to adjust to the enclosure. Because of the light fading, only those could be released yesterday because it wouldn't have been safe to release them in darkness because they can't see the fences and there's a possibility to run into them and they need to acclimatise. They both have done really, really well. You can see they're lying down. They're still a little bit on the stressed side, but that's normal. They're not used to people. They're not used to cars. Looking at Rafik's crate, it quickly becomes apparent why he had to be released early. You can see he just ate uh, the, the floor completely almost. He hadn't ever experienced something like this. And uh, was also the, one of the big problems was there were so many people out there. And I think the combination of all those factors just made it uh, so stressful for him that he just, yeah, went crazy, yeah. It's a graphic reminder of how powerful tigers are and also at the unpredictability of wild animals. The crates are placed hard up against the enclosure door to avoid the risk of one of the tigers escaping. Okay. First to be released is Juno, the mother. Oh. Juno. Oh. Not surprisingly, it takes quite a while before she's comfortable about venturing outside the crate. He's a little bit more eager to leave his crate. Yeah, we're in the relaxed cell. <laughs> it's the first time in 10 years that he's walking on grass. It must be so confusing for him. Hey, hi. Hey, welcome home. The cubs were born at Felida and have never seen grass or experienced enclosures like this. For them, it's a strange new world and very unsettling. Hey. Hey. Come say hello. Hey. Hey, loves. And they're preparing Sita. Hey, they Everything seems fine. Now it's just a matter of waiting to see how well the tigers settle into their new surroundings.
Two days later, Dr. Peter Caldwell receives the blood test results for Gypsy. Now I was extremely happy to see that there were no abnormalities, her kidney function is perfect, her liver function is perfect. And in general, on the inside, she's a healthy cat, a healthy lion. So the only issues that we're going to have to deal with is to keep her pain free. She's just got an amazing personality and a world to want to live. And just that alone is enough for me to want to keep her going. And I think she deserves the opportunity to have a good quality life. For everything she's gone through, I think she deserves it. A good quality of life is also what the Tiger family is now enjoying. It's been several months since they arrived at Lions Rock. They're finally in their permanent enclosures. And they're thriving. It was uh, after, I think, five, six weeks when we had everything done also and when they were adapted well and settled in well that we could release them to the big enclosure. It was actually very funny because they first went out, uh, you know, like testing the ground and checking it out and at the moment we're still hesitating, but after I think 10 minutes, they started running and running up and down and chasing each other. And uh, you could really see that they were surprised that they could run so far, you know? It was really the first time that they could really run. The space to roam, engaging environment, and an active lifestyle is providing clear benefits. The tigers are healthy, inquisitive, and playful. This kind of thing is really nice if you can see it firsthand and you can see how they are enjoying it and how they check out everything. And of course, then you know that all this was done, you know, you know, it was worth everything. And uh, you know that they will have a really good life from there on. Next time on Wild Animal Rescue, we follow a dangerous mission into the Gaza Strip to rescue two lion cubs. We will be in Rafah. Jihadists killed today, I hear, about 60 soldiers. But getting the cubs out of Gaza proves anything but easy. The military decide here and the city's border is closed, which is really mad. <laughs>